So in reality, it's very difficult for these shareholders you know, to effectively exert control. And as a result, you know, firms may pursue objectives other than profit maximization. And your syllabus has four main things you know, that, um, yeah, that it thinks that firms might do instead of maximize profits. One is what it might do is to, so this is alternative theories. Um, this is yeah, alternative theories of the firm then. What might a firm do other than maximize its profits? One assumption is that what it might want to do is to maximize sales revenue or total revenue. So in other words, it might want its, its, its revenue, which is P times Q, totally, in other words, total revenue. It might want that to be as high as possible. And that applies to firms where managers are paid on commission. Yeah, if you're paid a percentage of the revenue, then you want that revenue to be as high as possible. Diagrammatically, this one's fairly straightforward. Um, what you want to do is you want to produce where MR equals zero, because MR shows the increase in total revenue. So if you're at output Q1, yeah, each one of these units along here is adding to revenue. Total revenue is rising all the way until that point. After that point, Demand becomes inelastic, cutting price now leads to a decrease in total revenue. Yes, so revenue is falling there, so total revenue will be maximised where MR equals zero. So, other things you might want to do, yeah, um, other assumptions yeah, about what the firm might do, yeah, um, are sometimes you just want to be big. <coughs> yeah, so in the early days, <coughs> in the early days of Amazon, yeah. Um, yeah, what it, what it wanted to do was it wanted to maximize its market share. Yeah, so market share maximization or output maximization. On the syllabus, it calls it market share maximization. To do that, yeah, then what you want to do is produce the biggest you can get, but without making a loss. So again, if that's our if that's our sort of goes, yeah. Anywhere, as long as AR is above, as long as average revenue is above average cost, you can make a profit. So if I was making that output, average revenue is above average cost and so on, all the way to there. At that output, average revenue equals average cost. Yeah, any bigger, and the firm would now start making a loss. But what it has done is to get as much of the market um, as it possibly can. Other assumptions that you might want to do is, I mean, not all organisations um, are profit maximising at all. Yeah, um, <coughs> So some organisations are, you know, charitable organisations. Yeah, Wikipedia isn't a profit-driven organisation at all. Yeah, and, um, so, yeah, what they might want to do is to, you know, maximise welfare or something. Yeah? Um, so a third one is social and community objectives. Um, again, whether you would want to show this on a diagram, I don't know. But this is things like charities, like the Mozilla Foundation, yeah, that runs Firefox and those sorts of things. They're clearly not pursuing profit. Yeah, as, as an objective at all, really. Um, so the social and community objectives, yeah, you could argue that that's the same as being allocated efficient. I'm not sure they're exactly the same myself, but if you wanted to argue it, then that would be MC equals AR on the diagram. And lastly, yeah, um, some firms simply want to survive. Yeah, um, that might be true for new businesses. Yeah, it might be true for businesses um, in a recession. Those businesses, yeah, they tend to have a very close focus on costs and a very close focus on cash flow. Yeah, that's what matters yeah, to those sorts of businesses. Yeah, so they're not necessarily thinking about profit because, yeah, for example, if you sell things on credit, yeah, then you'll have a profit being only cash, yeah, and, and, and it's cash that ultimately puts paid to the business. So the point is that there are these alternative objectives yeah, that, um, yeah, that a firm might aim to pursue. Those are the four that you need to know um, yeah, from your syllabus. In terms of whether shareholders can really control uh, managers, uh, there has been, in the last 10 years, um, a rise in what's been called shareholder activism. Um, groups of shareholders have been starting to say, well, I'm not actually very happy you know, with big organisations simply paying themselves, you know, paying these, these managers paying themselves huge salaries. Um, and have started to take more action at annual general meetings. And what they've started to do is to try to appoint their own directors um, onto the board, you know, to represent their own interests. So in other words, they're actually stopping there from being a divorce between ownership and control, and you know, the owners themselves are taking control. And that's normally via what's called um, a proxy battle, um, where at 
at a shareholders meeting, you had the a particular group of shareholders says we want our representative you know, to sit on the to sit on the board, <coughs> and they'll try and win what are called proxy votes, the votes of the shareholders who don't attend the meeting, to say we're going to look after you. So therefore, there has been some sign over the last you know few years, particularly, yeah, you know, that organisations are becoming a bit more aligned to the interests of shareholders, and therefore this idea that you can simply do exactly what you want, yeah, you know, maybe maybe less true. One last thing. Um, there's one other branch of theories um, that says that actually um, organisations can't maximise anything. Um, and that's because of what are sometimes called stakeholders. Um, and stakeholders are anybody that have an interest in the continued survival of the business. So that might be um, customers, um, it might be shareholders, um, it might be workers, it might be suppliers, um, it might be the government, um, and so on. <coughs> and the point is that we've got to keep all of these different groups happy in the real world. And what one, there's a guy called Simon, um, that was his second name, it's not me. Yeah, um, yeah, what he said is that in reality, all firms, what they actually have to do is they have to make compromises. Um, yeah, so for example, yeah, we give, yeah, we can't give customers the lowest possible price because it means we can't pay wake workers any money. Yeah? So we have to compromise between these objectives. And what he said, he described that as satisficing. So the idea is we make satisfactory profit for shareholders. We give satisfactory wages to workers. We give satisfactory to price and quality to customers. Um, so hence we have to compromise. And that's that idea of satisficing theory.